Here. All right, let the record reflect that all committee members are present. All right, do we have any announcements? Uh, no departmental announcements. We will cover some regular business and some updates on our agenda items. Perfect. Let's go to approval of the minutes. We've got January 9th, 2024. Draft minutes. Any... I, don't, I don't know if I was here that day. So I will abstain on the side of caution. You came in late. You came in a little late. Because okay, I was, okay. But you were here. Okay. And then that for you. And then for what we're good, I will, I will <laughs> remove my abstain. Inspiring confidence, my man. <laughs> I like that. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, let's go to uh, public comment, see if anybody has any amendments to the minutes. Well, we only allow public comment in person. That's right. We no longer have that. Uh, all right. Well, without objection, we'll show those adopted as presented. Let's move on to public comment. Not seeing anybody here for public comment. Do you have for public comment for non-agenda items? <laughs> I'm here just to attend. <laughs> Perfect. All right, we'll keep moving then. Let's go to new business item 5.1. That's our update on our economic development strategic plan. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jill Scott. I'm the acting uh, deputy director of economic development. And we just wanted to give a quick update on where we are with the strat plan. Um, so since our last meeting, when we went over the strat plan with you, we've spent some time sending um, the strategic plan out to our national and our local partners. So we had review by um, the California Local Economic Development Association, um, the Economic Development Board of Sonoma County, Sonoma County Tourism, Metro Chamber, Visit Santa Rosa, Sonoma Small Business, and among other things. So we spent some time sending that out and then um, getting back comments and reviewing and talking it through with them. The only changes that we've made are mostly in alignment with language and concepts. So what we found is there's so many things that our national and our local uh, folks are our partners are already doing and how we can align with them to do it together rather than us being on separate paths. Um, so we've taken the plan and looked at, looked at that piece and really um, aligned all the language. So it, it's similar to national and local and um, taken opportunities to put partnerships within the plan. And those are really the only changes that we've made. And as of right now, the plans at the, um, with the graphic designer getting designed and having some pictures, some new pictures taken of our, our local area. And we're hoping to have it back and be able to bring it to full council in um, April. Um, and that's kind of where we are with that. Um, any questions on that one piece? Okay. Um, just a few pieces of implementation that we started on, just to let you know, even though the full plan is not um, going forward, we've started, um, we're starting to work on um, what we really align were measurements and metrics so that we can really look at our plan. It's a five-year plan, right? A lot of plans are three, there's either a three-year or a five-year plan we found. This one's a five-year plan. So we really wanna be able to look at metrics at the end of every single year to see where we are and how we're implementing where we need to adjust and move forward. Um, so right now we're working on a survey, um, a pretty large survey for small business, which includes home business, women, BIPOC, all kinds of different business owners. Um, we're gonna be partnering because there's several other agencies that are also want to do this and set foundational metrics for where we are with these types of businesses and what we can do moving forward. So we're working with them to prepare the survey and get that out. I'm hoping um, in the next several months, it'll be out on the street and we'll have some information from that to report back. And then we've begun um, reaching out to the national and the local real estate companies to discuss land preparation and availability for large business attraction. Um, that's really going to be a key component, I think, for us for large business attraction. Um, we're also setting up um, vacant and commercial retail building lists, um, retail, industrial, commercial, what's vacant, what's available, reaching out to those property owners to see who's interested in what their future plans are, if we can, um, you know, get the low hanging fruit and connect them with businesses right now um, or larger ones, right? But we can think about the future and what we can put in there, what we can connect with those. So um, all of that has started, that process has started behind the scenes. And that's really um, the majority of implementation. Is there any, any questions about that before I move on or comments? No, okay. 
And then Gabe and I, actually, today is our first one. We're starting our medium and large business tour. <laughs> so we're going to be meeting with med all the medium sized to large size businesses, talking to them about, um, well, you know, really, really making connections um, and opening up communication as much as possible, but also talking to them about what we can do better, what their struggles are in Santa Rosa, what are the good things we're doing here in Santa Rosa, how it is to, um, to be a business here. Um, and what we can work on in the future. And so I think there's two parts to this. Great, It's great that we're going to you know, have this open door of communication and these relationships with these businesses, which is a key to this, but also um, just gathering information for when we're doing business attraction, um, what works, what doesn't work, what we need to work on. And so that's um, that's starting today. We'll be making the rounds on those and trying to do at least a, at least a couple of months, if not more. And then um, after that, I just have some, oh, we have some overall updates for you. Um, one, I wanted to go through kind of what the economic scene in Santa Rosa and Sonoma County is looking uh, for the first, we're not to the end of the first quarter, but the beginning of 2024 and the end of 2023. Um, we're seeing about the same level of vacancy in the downtown that we've seen for a while. We still have some key spaces that are open. As you all know, we've got one Santa Rosa, 10 Santa or one Santa Rosa Avenue, 10 Santa Rosa Avenue, and then the Third Street Cinema, which is a corridor on Third Street that is all open. Um, and those are some key spots we'd like to see um, move. Um, industrial, which I think you all know has seen like this steady upward trend for so many years, has really steadied out um, and stalled, not stalled, but slowed down a bit um, in Sonoma County and Santa Rosa and actually nationwide. There's a uh, we're really seeing vacancy rates on an upward trend. Um, we think that a lot of the economists think that that's likely because there aren't a lot of buildings that have come out that have kept up with the needs. Um, and so it, it's mostly <clears throat> just about inventory. Um, retail vacancy rates have slightly risen. Office is still on the rise, unfortunately. Um, just for comparison, office uh, vacancy rates in 2022 were 14.5%, and in 2024, they're 16.1%. So that's a 1.6% increase, and that's here in our county and in Santa Rosa. That's um, one thing we don't want to see. Um, retail in 2022 was a 6.9%. In 2024, it's 85 That's also a 1.6 increase in Vacancy rates and then industrial, which is a bit of a surprising one um, in 2022 was 4.7, 2024 it's 7%. Um, so that's quite an increase um, that we're seeing. Um, in the development and the real estate world overall, uh, we're still seeing higher rates, although they did a little bit of a plunge and then back up again. Um, the cost of money is still high and couple that with CDs um, being, you know, the interest rates being high, so you can keep your money in it. We're seeing a lot of 1031 exchange clients that would usually buy another piece of real estate and roll their money over, actually taking the capital gain loss and putting their money into high yield accounts and holding it. So we're seeing a slow in development right now um, where people are holding their money in the higher rate accounts and just waiting for um, the interest rates to change and to do something. And that's nationwide. We're seeing it here in Santa Rosa. We're seeing it in Sonoma County. Um, but despite all of that, the 2024 forecast for Sonoma County is much better and exceeds our Bay Area partners um, if the forecast is correct. So um, that's something to look forward to and good, but something also for us to watch when we're doing, we're thinking about local businesses and business attraction. And then... Um, uh, California, I think you've all probably all heard that the Cal oh. conference is coming here to Santa Rosa and um, it's April 10th through the 12th of this year. It's going to be at the Hyatt, which is pretty exciting to have them all here. Um, the mayor and the city manager are both speaking on opening day at the conference. Um, we, we split up tours on Thursday from two to four. On the 11th, there'll be two tours. Um, the Economic Development Board is planning one tour. The city of Santa Rosa is planning a second tour. Um, the Economic Development Board is doing the Spasful Road um, area. They're going to visit Sonoma County Meets, Tia Maria, um, some of the developments, the mural projects, and then end at Matote. 
And then uh, Santa Rosa staff, uh, we are scheduling the downtown revitalization tour. So we're going to start at the Hyatt. We'll go to um, the Cannery project over to the Smart Station, talk about Smart Proposed Housing Project, Community Benefit District. And then we're going to head uptown to see 420 Mendocino Avenue development in, in progress. And then over to the two city surplus lots, Garage 5 and White House site to talk about the Surplus Lands Act and where we are with those developments. And then back down to the Hyatt again. Um, and that is really it for the conference for right now. Did you wanna talk a little bit about facades updates? Absolutely. Um, so first off, any questions about the conference? Well, I, I do have a when we speak about the office vacancy rates mm -hmm. of one point something and how we're actually faring better than our regional partners or the Bay Area, are there any zoning alternatives that we see being used elsewhere other than just office space that might be working for uh, other parts of California? Yeah. Uh, I can touch on that and Gabe can also talk on that, but um, that was a big piece that um, Ashley, myself, Gabe, and the planning team has worked on in the general plan update. And I, I probably should have mentioned that as well is that we've combed through the general plan update with a fine tooth comb to make sure that these two plans coincide, that they match. Um, we've made a lot of changes for it to match the strategic plan. And we've looked at things and Ashley has been a huge help with that at, different types of zoning and different districts that we can put in place um, to allow that in the general plan so we can make some changes. Did you want to add anything? Yeah, and I, I think then that's an excellent point. And, and we've seen with some of the unused office space in other areas that it's reprogrammed in a way that people did not envision years ago. Um, and that's for recreational purposes. I, I've seen pickleball look at vacant office space. So what, how we're responding to that is we need to be nimble enough to be able to handle that from a policy standpoint if all of a sudden that request comes in so we can activate that space um, without a really rough road through the permitting process. And that really starts with the discussion in the general plan. Um, but then I think it really moves when, when Jill and I do this tour of businesses, that really is to obtain feedback. And then our goal is really to provide incentives from a process standpoint. That's something that the department can do by just changing internal process and policy. So all this feeds into that, which is really the next step in our process and our evolution in the strat plan is to sort of understand what an incentive package looks like to bring these uses in. Um, and that's a really important point. A lot of jurisdictions have that. And really, in, when you're dealing with vacant office space around the county, we have to be competitive in that program increases that that um, competitive nature in that environment. But that is what we're looking at, is how we reprogram that space for uses that we would not envision in the past. Well, I'm, I'm very happy that we're looking at the agility and, and adaptability when it comes to zoning in our downtown district specifically, just because we've seen it work in, whether it's Santana Row or, or even the Gaslight in, in San Diego, or even at the Smash Road where we've seen the mixed use uh, become something that's, that's, that's normal for our city. So. I definitely applaud your efforts of visiting and 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 really gaining information of what what is needed for the specific parts of our city. Uh, and to piggyback, uh, we have to be competitive with other areas. And one of the policies that we've talked about for quite a while, possibly revamping, is the local preference and really giving people a strong incentive to continue to have office space or to continue to have industrial space in the city of Santa Rosa. And I'd be really interested in seeing us, because right now it's at 1%. 1% isn't going to make margins for, for folks. And we know that the economic multiplier is up to seven, nine uh, times when it stays in your community. If we bump that up to 3% or 5%, this, it's driving economic development uh, and uh, keeps those businesses and those jobs here. So uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's a way for us to continue to advance that. I know that it's hinted at, if not called out directly in the economic strategic plan, but I think that that's a, a pretty simple policy for us to be able to look at. And then I also had a question, you mentioned Matote, and that's a prime example of something that's popped up that's driven interest and in economic development. And yet I know its future is a little bit uncertain. And I'm wondering if there's just an update on sort of where that's at with as the county moves forward. Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, and that's an excellent point. I think Matote was an incredibly creative idea that really had an impact to the community. 
in a space that was sort of underutilized, but was not part of the bigger program. So we've been having, Reg, I meet with the CDC in mid pen weekly <clears throat> to discuss the status of that project. Um, right now, it looks like they're still, the financial aspect, they're still balancing that out, but it's getting much closer. They, they've closed the gap significantly. Um, much of the discussion is about breaking ground this summer. And we have allowed them to phase the development of that site mm -hmm. to ensure that Metote can stay as long as possible. And then through that process, there'll be discussions about what the final use looks like. Um, but specifically, they can build the infrastructure, we can build the affordable housing, um, and then there's solutions to protect that through the entirety of that construction exercise. Um, but beyond that, that's very much a conversation with the CDC on what their ultimate plans are for the plaza. Um, but just know that we are supporting the, the longevity of Matote for as long as the county wants to keep it there. Yeah, and I think that that's the interest. My interest, I suspect, for the rest of council is don't get rid of an asset to a community and then have it sit vacant while we wait for the CDC to either find their financing or to move forward on a project, right? Because it, it has been, it's been great. No, and I appreciate your comment, even going back to when it was property of the county and we're looking at the old Albertson site, if the, the, the site was torn down only to do just that, sit vacant yep. for, for decades uh, or decade plus years. Uh, and, but to piggyback on your comment, you know, we do have the food vendor they thought that part of it, but also I'd like to incorporate or, or include that conversation, the knickknacks or the crafts or the artisan uh, aspect of what used to be the, the, the metote inside the TGNY or, or TGNY site, where a lot of those vendors weren't able to continue because we weren't able to find the space and other logistical issues that we couldn't overcome. So hopefully in that conversation about food vending, it's also the artisan vendors that hopefully are included in that Incubator program. <laughs> Anything else, Jeff? All right. Okay. Um, and then our next item, I just wanted to provide Let's a brief update. Check really fast. Scene. Public comment? No comment. Okay. Go ahead. Um, just a very quick update on where we stand with our ARPA programs, very specifically our small business support program. Um, that is the, the one program that had the least amount of expenditure in it, and there's a few good reasons for that. So the Small Business Support Program is actually made up of three separate elements. Um, we have our facade grants, um, we have our placemaking, and then there's also an incubator component to that um, with, with a small amount of funding to it. So the facade grants are inside that, there's two components. There's parklets, which are slightly different, and then there's those improvements people were making to the front of the building to increase destination awareness, to improve that site for those that are, were impacted by the pandemic. Um, so on the grants, we have roughly around 720000 There's agreements that take place in there. The, the property owner has to commit to completing those by a certain time frame. Um, we've been partnering with our uh, city attorney's office to get those completed. They're all at the finish line now, and we're really ready to start rolling these out. Um, basically, the way that program works is the businesses are eligible to get 20% up front, and then there's an 80% reimbursement of, for the full amount on the back end. Uh, most of these projects, we've teed them up to ensure that anything that requires an entitlement review or a planning action is done up front, so we can put them in a very small window. So we're about to release the 720 to the community, and we'll march that through. Um, what we have to be mindful of is some won't be able to complete it for a variety of different reasons. So they will be turned back in that program. Uh, what I've been looking to do with the turn back is to better support parklets downtown. Um, the construction of a parklet downtown um, it's very difficult to think this, but with current construction and design costs, forty to sixty thousand dollars for a platform of that nature is the going rate. Um, that's more expensive than what we thought when we went down the road of um, providing a permanent avenue for parklets. So, adding that additional amount will help us transition from the few we have sitting there that are still temporary under COVID. So that would be El Coqui, Wariki, Belly, um, and also uh, Concha, which may not. I think they'll pull that. Um, but that will give us right now five parklets in the downtown that are permanently. And what you'd see out of that is very similar to what Osceola's did, which is beautiful. It aligns to the building. Um, it's an asset to the downtown and it's asset to the public right of way. Uh, so there may be some shifting with the, the disbursement of those funds. Um, the other piece is facades or excuse me, murals, which falls under placemaking. Um, those have commenced. We are spending money in that arena. There's more to come on that front. So we'll build out that program. Um, and then one of the pieces that Jill and I are working on um, 
very closely now as an incubator program. So we wanted to dedicate some funds to that. Uh, it can be a little challenging to set up um, an incubator program that the city runs um, becomes very costly. You usually have to have partners that are providing time to run that long term. Um, but we want to use some creative approaches here. We've discussed concepts with Katadi. We're discussing concepts with the county on how we can come together as a larger group of jurisdictions to provide an incubator somewhere in the city, because that provides resources to everyone in our county and can benefit Santa Rosa through that. Um, so more to come on that front. Um, that those are in the initial stages of, of understanding sort of the best use of those funds, but we do want to delegate, dedicate dollar amounts to incubators. So any questions on facades? Is there any discussion happening about closing down 4th Street again through the summer? So that was one of um, the, the conversations that Jill and I have had with the Chamber. And this, this will be an ongoing discussion um, because through the use of SRTBIA funds, through the use of community promotion funds, the city does support events. And how can we take those funds and better support instead of many events over the course of multiple months, how do we sort of throw our eggs into a few different baskets that provide a bigger bang for the buck downtown? Um, and what are some creative approaches for what we would wanna do downtown? And I think using um, this committee to bounce off those ideas to understand what it would look like if we sort of work with the chamber to reprogram something like the Wednesday night market. I know that that concept, Jill and I have talked about just a downtown block party concept. That how do you just provide an avenue to allow businesses to come out? It's not bringing other businesses in. It's just supporting the downtown businesses to provide what they have in the public right-of-way space. Um, so right now, there's a lot of good ideas being thrown around, and we will continue those discussions. And as they start materializing into something more formally, we'll bring that forward in front of this committee, and there'll be the more formal process to make that a program. Yeah, and I just what don't. What I, I can say, sir, is that uh, there seems to be very little interest uh, from Mendo, Mendocino, up to Russian River uh, of closing that section of Fourth. Um, we are engaging some business owners from the mall up to, to Mendocino, so La Rosa, Belly, Barranqui. Um, and there seems to be a little bit of interest. Uh, what we don't want to do is if there is no interest from the business owners to close 4th Street, obviously, we don't want to move forward with that. Um, and we'll continue those conversations and report back. I think that there's the flip side of that also, though, which is the interest from the public. Um, because one of the things when you talk about the Parklet program, when you talk about putting art in public places, that worked really well with 4th Street there, and it did drive people's interest in coming downtown. And so I, I do think uh, continuing to explore that as an option, then it makes it more sense for people to make that investment in their parklet. It makes it so that it makes more sense for people to have Taco Tuesday bike rides down 4th Street if it's a protected area for folks to be. Uh, I think there's two sides to that coin. Absolutely. And, and so personally, uh, not speaking for the team, yeah. um, I do see a benefit in showing proof of concept, right, on four uh, from Santa Rosa Plaza up to Mendo. Right. Right. And so um, in the sake of thought partnership, right, if yeah. we close that section, say a pilot program, maybe from June to September, uh, we work with Parks and Rec and possibly program out that area, uh, work with um, the, the market as well. Um, and we can show the benefit, we can show the value. I think we have a stronger case to make to then uh, extend the pilot, um, not only the, the duration of it, but also the physical space. Yeah, I think uh, for me, I think that the pandemic was the proof of concept getting to see it play out. And then as a bike rider, that segment is not big enough to attract me to use that. Yeah. But but 4th Street being longer, uh, having more uh, opportunity, that's what would be interesting to me. Absolutely. And so knowing that, yeah. right? Um, if we like, were like, the, move... like the bank, the banks on yes. that side are not particularly attractive no, for I, me as a pedestrian. I, I, hear, you. To... I hear you. Um, and, and also as an elected official, um, if we see the value, the benefit yeah. in closing all of 4th Street, then we would need your assistance in messaging that to the business owners. Happy to help. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah, thank you. For sure. 
Any additional questions on? Oh, a comment. We spoke of producing a, a maybe a program that involves other cities, uh, incubator program. And I know that the building behind towns and La Fondita has remained open or vacant for a long time. And I've always thought of what possible use could that building provide for for the city center as a, as a benefit. I'm just throwing it out there. I mean, there's a lot of space in there. And I, I could almost imagine like a like an indoor flea market type of thing or incubator for whatever we wish to call it. Just throwing it out there, just keep it in mind. We appreciate that. Yes. Very much. Anything else? On this or yep. No. Public comment? Go ahead. Yeah. When you talk about incubator space, could you describe what you have in mind? Like in terms of incubator space, how would the spaces possibly be used? Uh, sounds interesting, but could you define that? Go into a little more detail about incubator space. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thanks. So yeah. Through the chair, and can you state your name for the record, sir? Sure, be happy to. It's David Turin. Thank you. Yep, go. Okay. Yeah, please Sorry. procedures. <laughs> but we're, we're we're very loose in this committee. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so in incubator, it, and it really just depends on what sort of business sector the incubator is focusing on. Um, the ones that I have heard about here locally have a tendency to focus on food. So beverage or food production that's happening at a very startup level where someone is actually operating out of their home. They start running into space, but they are not they start running out of space, excuse me, but they're not generating enough revenue to find their own space in a much larger commercial business. So an incubator space is often a shared location where different businesses can use similar equipment in that shared location. It has some level of management and training that takes place long term. So if someone wants to be a professional chef and they're starting a home, cook, a home kitchen, they're advancing through this. And then there's generally a period of time in which the individual can be in that space before they have to make the next step in their business career. So it really is a bit of a startup location and it has all the equipment needed. Um, for example, if you're making fermented beverages such as kombucha, it would focus on those items. And then um, from a long-term management standpoint, uh, some of the options that have been discussed is really how do you partner with Sonoma State or the junior college because they have these programs where they can either offer those programs to individuals or then handle some of the management long-term um, for those types of uses. Uh, because it is, it's a space issue, um, it's a upfront cost with hardware issue, and then it has a long-term management to be successful as well. Thank you, appreciate that. And if I may add, you know, if, where I've seen incubator spaces used very effectively are places where there's high amount of density. And uh, Los Angeles, for me, is a prime example where also you find yourself in an international uh, building, so to speak, where you have every every food from every part of the world, but also mixed in with artisan uh, products, uh, handmade products from also all over parts of the world. So you're definitely seeing where where the entrepreneur spirit is being nurtured and supported. And and at, at one point or another, I've seen it in Rosen specifically, where we start seeing the vendors move outside of our area into the, the general mainstream or downtown of the city that they occupy. So that's what we're starting to see now in Santa Rosa. So it's definitely a, a, a an incubator. So the chicks become, uh, spread their wings and fly. A couple more comments or questions, if I could. Uh, in terms of the parklets, you know, improving and upgrading the parklets downtown would be terrific. It seems like you're on track to do that. That would make a huge difference, I think. It's great to have the outdoor dining, but upgrading some of those facilities would be wonderful to do. What about for those that don't go through the upgrade, do you have a phase out program? in place and what's the timing for that yeah go ahead and get all your questions out so okay. that they can so another another question i think the pilot for downtown for fourth street kind of looking at different options for really creating a more vibrant downtown by closing a portion of fourth street is a great idea and should be pursued and the pilot option um, even though we've had the COVID period as a trial run 
I think a more formal pilot looking at different options would be important to do. But I think it's important to put down a date in mind, get it on a schedule. When is that going to happen? The pilot's a great concept. Coming back to this committee is terrific, but when? So that's it. Okay, so um, on the parklets, uh, the way it actually works is, um, as I mentioned, there are a few out there that are still under their temporary parklet program that was put in place in our initial responses to the code. Uh, when we adopted our permanent program, uh, we set a transition plan for those parklets. Uh, basically, the way it worked is there was a certain deadline in which they had to apply for the permanent parklet, and then they had to keep that permanent parklet active and be moving on and couldn't create a delay of more than 60 days through that cycle. So um, unfortunately, what's happened with some of those as they went down that road and they applied for the parklet is that costs were increasing. They were sort of value engineering. So there was a lot of back and forth in the review. There wasn't really the city's time. It was more on the applicant making a decision about design. Um, but to answer your question more specifically, um, Wariki and Belly are moving forward with a permanent parklet. Um, that temporary parklet will be allowed to remain in place until that's done. Um, Concha and El Coqui are not at this point, so they will be removing, and we were working through that process. So those two will be removed. Um, and then we have other applications that, that may come through with new parklets in certain areas through the, the um, small business support program that I mentioned. Um, but generally, the timeline of Concha and El Coqui is you're looking at a few months of removal there. Um, Concha will likely occur before that. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, time frame for part four, say looking at Fourth Street. We don't have a time frame right now, sir. We'll work on it. It's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we understand. We have more information. We'll share it. All right, I'll bring it back, Gabe. Anything else? Uh, just one uh, quick update on the staffing side. Um, obviously, with the acting roles that we currently have, um, we're maneuvering through what the economic development team looks like in the future um, and working on filling spots. Um, what I would like to announce, though, is um, Rafael, which I know you know him really well. Um, we want to move him into more of a predominant um, outreach role for the department as a whole. So our goal is to pull him into the graffiti pilot program that the council adopted to have him be the face of that program, uh, to work on community engagement efforts through our code enforcement team, um, and to really be more of an ombudsman for the department. So he, he is really your face. And if there's issues, you go to him. He has a direct line to me. So we, we think that, that that's going to be a more efficient way to get issues resolved. And he's done a fabulous job. I really appreciate the efforts he's put in over the years and creating relationships with the community. Um, we want to honor him with a uh, more difficult role in the department. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, of course, that means that he'll be taking more on. So we're understanding what that means to the economic development team, and we're working through that. Um, but we have a lot of creative approaches where we potentially can really look at, you know, our first step is to look at um, options that do not increase costs. Um, but when we look at our strap plan, we're also developing what our strap plan really needs to succeed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an important part of this process. Um, so just understand that we're going through that. Um, it is a priority on our end to get this solidified. Jill's been doing an amazing job in the acting role, um, but we also want to solidify this and really move forward with the strap plan and you know have the community feel comfortable with the services they're getting from this department and fill those roles and get people moving in the right direction. So that is our strategy. Um, but the immediate is to have Rafael take on more for the department. Congratulations, I think. <laughs> and it sounds like if I'm, it sounds like uh, we're, we're simply giving him a title to a job he's already been doing. <laughs> uh, congratulations, absolutely. Well, uh, and I will say, you know, we've reiterated it over and over again in this committee, but I'll continue to do so. Uh, we understand if we need to dip into some of our money uh, to be able to deliver the economic strategic plan, I view it as revving the engine. Uh, that it'll pay itself off over time if we can create lasting economic development throughout the city. So just let us know what you guys need to implement because I think it's a good plan. Priming the engine. Priming the engine? Revving the engine. Okay. Revving the engine doesn't go anywhere. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like this conversation. <laughs> Anything else, guys? No. Cool. 
Uh, that concludes our agenda topics for today. Okay. Uh, so uh, you heard from me earlier. Let's see if the council members have anything that they are interested in us bringing in the next couple of meetings, but I am interested in the revamp of the local preference. I think that that's something that we really can move quickly. Anything else from, yeah, go ahead. I got a couple. Um, Dave, to follow up with our conversation here, we should get an update on the child care density bonus and mm -hmm. where that's at. Um, and then uh, we've talked a couple of times about, I don't even know how we describe it, like the miscellaneous business ordinance. Uh, we talked about this kind of ordinance that covered multiple things with signage or improvements and stuff like that. Um, th this may overlap with parks to a certain extent, but um, in attracting people to downtown, um, a small play structure of some kind on Courthouse Square yeah. to make it more family friendly. Yes, yeah, specific. I'm glad you brought that up because specifically vacant spaces, um, repurposing vacant spaces where developments are not yet moving forward with some form of an amenity for the downtown so that it's not just a blank spot. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, and then just as a report item, um, if we could uh, reach out to the Economic Development Board of the county um, about the, the uh, CAFO bill um, and see if there's any ramifications um, for us as a city. Um, I know they're doing their own economic analysis on it. Whenever that comes out, uh, have an update for us. And then just the last thing, um, under adjournment here, we have, you know, our accessibility stuff. There's the phone number is not complete. So I just want to make sure that we update the, the agenda so that we're in compliance with the ADA requirements. Thank you. No, for, for, thanks. For me, it was really updates, but those were just touched on. So just see how we're doing. And signage was one of them. Uh, right, great idea with the playground. Yeah. That's, that's an excellent idea. Cool. All right. Any public comment? Yeah. All right. I think with that, uh, business is done. So we'll adjourn. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank 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 you. Uh, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>